and thank you for having me. Um, absolutely delighted to be speaking. And what I would definitely do is talk a little bit about my journey, how the idea came about. Um, I do that about 10 to 15 minutes. And then if there are any questions uh, beyond the whole TEDx speaker format, I'd be happy to take that as well. Just one moment before I begin. So my journey started uh, my my journey started very similarly to how most graduates imagine it to be. Um, I was on my way to becoming an investment banker, and in 2016, I had a great job at uh, Goldman Sachs in Bangalore. It was one of the leading investment banking firm, and something that any commerce graduated really uh, graduate really wanted to do. It was a brilliant start to my career, made good money, and I had friends and family who were really the wind beneath my wings. Uh, but there was something that constantly felt like was missing. There was a sense of fulfillment, and there was definite, definitely a sense of uh, feeling like I was making a difference. Um, and this, this feeling further only increased when I saw the women who used to beg for arms at the, uh, the same traffic signals that I used to cross every day. Uh, those people would be there begging uh, no matter what the day was, whether it was raining, whether it was just shine. The whole year round, we would always find those people on the streets and sometimes give them a few rupees, but didn't really make any difference. Uh, my life just kind of chugged along. Um, but it made a, a huge turn in my life when I met Uma. Uh, Uma, like those ladies at the traffic signal, was a transgender person. And like those people, she faced many horrors in her life for just being brave enough to be who she was. Uh, my colleagues and I at Goldman decided to meet Uma. And so we could pitch a project uh, to the team about hiring transgender individuals within the company. We saw trans people at different spaces, whether it was the signals, the buses, the beaches in Chennai, but we could never see them in any space as equally as most of us live. And so that project was for us a thought, an idea to pitch for something uh, better. And so we decided to meet Uma. And to be honest, that meeting really changed everything for me. And it truly changed me as well. Uh, Uma told us about the kind of life that she was living and how tragic it was uh, in the same city where we lived so comfortably. She told me about the stories of India's ethnic transgender communities, uh, people from the Hijra system, Aravani, Jogapas, different names for these communities. Um, she told me about the Jamaat system, which is a foster family system created by these communities. She told me about the love and the hatred that existed within these communities. Um, when young trans people don't find acceptance within their own homes, don't find acceptance with their biological families, uh, they become a, a part of such a foster culture that actually takes care of them. Um, we heard about uh, stories of rape uh, that could never be reported because who cares about transgender people and their stories of rape? We heard about deaths, HIV scares, abuse, uh, discrimination that the trans community faced in every sphere, whether it was education, housing, law, employment. And for the community, uh, begging and sex work was like the only option that they had left for survival. And for a lot of them, they were also forced into it. And no wonder that year, 31% of Indian transgender people committed suicide. And this is only the reported number of the reported number of transgender people. And any social activist can tell you that that, num that number is uh, very minute and it is definitely a lot more. So I wanted to do something to make a difference. I had no idea where to start. And the thought began that, okay, let me just uh, you know, spend some more time with the community, figure out what are the gaps and how can I really uh, use my capacity. And so I quit my job uh, at Goldman in 2016. I spent about six months on the field um, inside the Jamaat systems to see the difficulties for myself, uh, to be more in touch with the reality on the ground. And I learned a lot about sacrifice, about dignity, uh, and about all the helplessness that the community faced. I would also have to say that I, I experienced a lot of love, uh, something that we don't hear often about, which, which the trans community so fondly shares among themselves. And I realized what I wanted to do. I began Periphery, 
um, an organization, a startup, which was named after these individuals who lived their life on the peripheral edges of the human society. And I started Periphery with one small ambition that, you know, we just create jobs for trans people. And I wanted to start with one person, identify one transgender individual who wanted access to an inclusive job opportunity and ensure that that company would accept, you know, wholeheartedly uh, that person and actually create a career path for them. So Periphery was started with the with a thought and an idea to create equal opportunities and to build an ecosystem of LGBTQIA inclusion. Uh, one step at a time and before we knew it, uh, we had created jobs for over 210 uh, transgender people over these years. Uh, we were able to impact over 350 trans people positively through our training, our job interventions, our counseling support and uh, there were many, many stories that you know, we're able to look back at in, in over these years. Uh, there's Madhu who works at Chai King as a Chai tea officer. She used to beg and was, uh, was into alcohol abuse for many years uh, after her family disowned her. Once she started working, she was reinvited back into the fold and she recently even attended her brother's wedding after years apart. Um, there are people like Anusha who are working in organizations like ANZ as wealth operations analyst. Uh, there are people that we've placed in management level positions and are able to really uh, take boardroom level calls on who really joins the organization and what difference can we make. And that's when I realized that the idea of creating equal opportunities is so important. It wasn't just about financial dignity. Uh, but it was also for us a way to enable these individuals to win their own self-respect and to become even more braver. Uh, almost all of them now, all these 210 people are now role models in their own community. They're helping more and more trans men and trans women to come forward to live lives of economic sustainability and social inclusion. An idea that led us to job creation, sensitization, um, you know, touching over 22,000 corporate India employees and really helping them understand what it means to be a lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender person in the country and to really help these people uh, understand the challenges of these communities as well. Uh, we're often asked, uh, why is the idea only pertaining to social and economic and specifically economic independence? And the simple answer to that is economic independence is the first step to living a fulfilling life for this community. Um, a lot of us are so privileged that we don't have to worry about where the next meal is coming from, whether we have a shelter on our, uh, for ourselves or not. And this is so important for the trans community to say no to exploitation and abuse because they won't have to worry about what happens to them tomorrow if they are financially independent. And the the aim is to ensure that this community, that transgender people, gender non-confirming trans persons are able to walk uh, shoulder to shoulder with their colleagues across India's offices. And that's, that's what we are really striving to do and you know, aiming to deliver as well. I wanna end this by uh, quoting something that Maya Angelou has said, which is uh, your legacy is in what you leave behind, but your legacy is really every life you've ever touched. And I really hope that all of you uh, in your own journeys make this a part of your own legacy and impact people and lives um, you, as you can. Thank you.